You are going to pray for your destiny. You are going to call it by name and declare that in this season, my destiny open, 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 open up. He said, Lo, I come. Please pray, please pray. Destiny, in the name of Jesus, be open. My assignment, my destiny, open up in the name of Jesus. No wasting time, no rambling around. Open up in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Outside, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Open up, open up, open up in the name of Jesus. Open up, open up. Open up in the name of Jesus. Open up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. You are going to pray. And you are going to cry to God. And say, Lord, every, every disarrangement of truth in my life that has been responsible for my stunted growth, I pray by the Spirit of God, rearrange my life, rearrange my destiny. What I have believed wrongly, correct it, oh God. I am open, I'm not a rebel. Let your emphasis be my emphasis. Pray. More than what a man of God said. Arrange my life sequentially. Arrange my destiny sequentially. Who am I to meet in this season? Who must enter my life in this season? Based on your arrangement. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please don't think you are, you are wasting your time. You are praying seriously. Now, I say this with all humility. Listen. Please listen. Imagine if till now I was still trying to hear God concerning koinonia. Are you seeing now? Imagine there are people according to the blueprint of your assignment. You are not supposed to be looking for money now. You are supposed to have it already because the next phase of your life is dependent on that supply. There are people right now at according to God's blueprint, the level of prophetic you should be operating in, it is required for the kind of assignment. But because you are still here, God cannot move with you. Hear me? Hear me? There are ladies, according to God's blueprint, you should be ready for marriage now. Based on the sequence of your destiny, 
but it's right now you are getting serious with your life. Hear me. Hear me. There are some of you according to the sequence of destiny. It's you and your elder brother that should be standing as pillars. But the devil killed your brother from birth. That means you are carrying the burden of two people. You need your grace plus the grace that will come on you else. So when you pray one hour, God will say, add it to, because you were supposed to pray only an hour because there's someone else holding it with you. But he's alive and he's drinking around. And God's agenda must move forward. So you must build stamina to be able to carry it. Listen, listen to me. Please listen. I'm speaking by the spirit. Don't think I'm just talking anyhow. Listen to me. Please listen. There are families according to the design of God. You are supposed to be three men. But the devil made sure no man come to that family. It was later on you showed up, sometimes as the last born. And now you have to stand in a position of three men as one man. There are families. It's supposed to be you and your father and your pastor. But now your father did not serve the Lord or your father has died. God will not change his purposes. His plans can change. But his purposes remain eternal. Listen. Listen. There are families. According to God's design. You should never even try to say, okay, I'm looking for two or three jobs. Because according to that design. Your father should have been responsible to help you with an inheritance but now the devil hijacked that destiny and the way you are right now if you fail there is no more hope for your family because everyone that came to help the devil took them out of the way you know it i like you to pray and say lord i will not fail you and i will not fail destiny is someone praying lord i will not fail you i will not fail destiny if it depends on me then I will not fail if it depends on me if it depends on me to change the course of my family if it depends on me to enthrone Jesus over my family if it depends on me I will not fail someone pray pray with the picture of your loved ones in your mind Pray with the picture of your children on your mind. Pray with the picture of your destiny on your mind. If it depends on me, I will not fail. It may take time, but I will not fail. Hallelujah. I wish you people knew that song. Atmosphere, shift now. Huh? You may not know it. I just, I just had that song in my spirit. I will not fail if it depends on me. I think about my life with all humility. And I think about the destinies that would have gone down even if I were born again and I refused to answer the call. Listen. The next prayer point. We are praying. Listen. Spirit of the living God, if I am found anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Bring me back to the place of destiny. Lift your voice and pray. If I found myself anywhere that my destiny does not require, turn me around. Please pray, pray, pray. Align me to destiny. 
align me to destiny align me to destiny geographically align me to destiny relationally align me to destiny financially allow me to align me to destiny spiritually Align me to destiny, oh God. Pray that prayer and watch your life change. Align me to destiny. Let me stop rambling around. Bring me to the place, the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. It was never my intention, never my intention to be in Zaria. It would have been the last place for me to think of being at this time. But you see, there's something about destiny. There are people when the devil wants to waste their time, they will get American visa and travel and roam around America. Just because you are making some money does not mean you are in destiny. Look at how God brought some of you here. God carried you from different places. It's destiny. Forget about the story that brought you. Align me to destiny. Let me not find... Listen, let me tell you this. There are people, when the devil wants to destroy their destiny... They will receive certain kinds of promotions you would think uh, is promotion is not wrong in itself but they will receive a promotion and become a ceo and that ceo will not allow them do and be certain things life is more than money oh. life is more than fame are we together next prayer point lord where am i supposed to have been in destiny that i am not I pray by the Spirit in this season, take me there. Take me there. I should not be at this level. In ministry, financially, maritally, spiritually, pray by your Spirit. Bring acceleration to my life. There is no more time to waste. The voice of my generation is crying. Speedy manifestation, oh God, of all that pertains to my destiny in this season. Hallelujah. I saw a word three times. It came to my vision and I knew that the Lord wanted me to bring this word and then to use that word to bring liberty for someone. I saw the word limitation and I just shrugged it off. I kept praying and then I saw it the second time limitation and the third time I saw it limitation when god begins to emphasize something like that he's telling you that someone is on his way to church already and this is the embargo that the devil has placed over his life over his destiny maybe someone has come here for the first time asking questions and saying lord is this how my life will continue to be i love you but it looks like something is sitting upon my destiny to limit means to stop people from seeing the fullness of a thing to limit means to reduce 
knows the potential of that thing. It may not mean to stop it. There's a difference between limitation and stagnation. Stagnation means you are in one place. Limitation means you are not moving fast enough. And if you don't move fast enough with respect to time, there are some things that will not happen. Listen, please, I want you to pay attention. This is the house of God. And when God speaks like this, it is because someone's destiny has been crawling and you need to experience the grace of God. Whether you are outside, whether you are inside, listen, when a word comes and it is for you, don't just assume. No, there, there is an attitude that you used to receive the word with. Limitations. I'm going to pray for you right now. We'll just take 10 minutes from my preaching time and let me just deal with these issues once and for all over our lives for as long as we are alive let me tell you and this anointing god has given us that which represents limitation in your life bar we must crush it to its knees i'm about to pray now and i want you to please bring those people under the anointing now that the power of god comes upon in the name of jesus every family every individual every destiny that has been tied down by altars of limitation so that you will not move forward maybe you are a mother maybe you are a father maybe you are a man of god maybe you are a businessman maybe you are coming here for the first time watching online and it looks like there are altars that have vowed that you will not move forward i stand by this mantle i have been anointed by god to declare your liberty right now may the power of god come upon you be delivered now but now, altars of limitation, you come under arrest. This moment, altars of limitation, you come under arrest. This moment, altars of limitation, you come under arrest. This moment, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, please hear me. Some of you are standing not only for yourself. I want to pray for families here. Whole families that have been tied down. It looks like every altar sitting on the Kadikata, sitting on the glory of any family. If I be sent by God, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. May fire fall upon that altar now. May fire fall upon that altar. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to declare. I declare my release. Every limitation, no matter how long, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant. Is someone praying? Those following online, I release that anointing upon you from America to Europe to Nigeria, parts of Africa. I declare, may the anointing of the Spirit touch you right in your room, in your office, right now. I set you free. Yokes of limitation, be delivered now. Every chain that has tied your hand and tied your feet hold on please listen we're still praying in Acts chapter 12 watch this now when Peter was in the prison they tied two parts of his body number one his hands that's a symbol of your productivity number two your feet that is the symbol of your advancement. They didn't tie his mouth. They didn't tie his eyes. But they tied his hand and his feet. And the Bible says they bound him. That means to bind a man 
it is not every part of him you need to tie. If you can tie his productivity and tie the basis for his advancement, that man is bound. Let me release someone by the anointing of the spirit. I declare your hands spiritually. My God, fire is coming on people's hands now. These hands that have not been released. Maybe your father's hand was tied and all through his lifetime he lived a miserable life. Maybe your mother's hand was tied. Some of you, the hands of your siblings. I come holding the key of David, given by the God of heaven himself. In the name of Jesus, may those chains be loose from your hands. Loose from your feet. Loose from your hands from your feet loose from your hands shapakatoskata loose from your feet man of god i release you it's time for your ministry to open up i release you apostle prophet teacher makatosh keteketa every altar sitting on your ministry every altar sitting on your ministry be released now When Jesus was buried, it was not just enough that he was put in a tomb. The Bible said a stone was used to cover that place. So when Jesus resurrected, it was not just enough to come out to rise from the dead. That stone needed to be rolled away so he would come out. Same thing happened with Lazarus. Let me roll away any stone. When it was time for Lazarus to come back to life, let me speak to someone. Everything dead in your life, hear the word of the Lord. Talita Kumi, come alive, come alive, come alive. Every mantle, every door of favor, every opportunity that has been closed over your destiny. Everything that has died, hear the word of the Lord. Your influence, your relevance, come back to life now. Come back to life now. He says, Son of man, can these bones live again? He said, Only thou knowest. He said, Prophesy. I want to prophesy. Oh, bones can come back to life. Dead businesses can come back to life. Dead spiritual dimensions. You used to have dreams, prophetic encounters. You used to pray for hours. But now something has happened to your life. May that fire come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Hear me. When there is an attack in your life, there are three things that you will lose. Number one, the first thing that you will lose to tell you that the devil is attacking your life is your peace. The second thing that you will lose when the devil is attacking your life is the gift of men. If you lose money, it was not an attack. It can just be a business mistake. But when you lose men, I assure you, it's an attack. Hmm. Hallelujah. Look at this. Every point in the life of Jesus, men and angels came to attend to him. But when he was on his way to go to the cross, men ran away from him. Only one man out of the multitudes of people he had helped to build and raise and do all of this, one walked with him and held the cross for him aside from John and his mother at the cross. So when you begin to lose your peace, 
Number two, when you begin to lose the gift of man, it is an attack from the pit of hell. Hallelujah. The third thing that you will know as a sign that is an attack is passion. Passion for the things of God. Passion for your destiny. Passion for actualizing your goals. Nothing matters again. Your fight, the Bible says the zeal of the Lord will perform this. There is something called the zeal of the Lord. When you lose your peace, when you lose men, when you lose passion, know immediately that there is an attack. I want to declare these three things over your life before we sit down. Number one, the Bible says, now the Lord of peace himself will give you peace always and by all means. I want to prophesy that by all means dimension of peace. That means whatever it takes for your peace, in the name of Jesus, may God make it so in your life. That by all means order of peace, enjoy it in the name of Jesus. Number two, there are some of you who have jobs, but you do not have men. Some of you have intellect, you don't have men. Some of you have churches, but you do not have men. Men are very important. Men are in many cases a sign that God is with you. I have taught you that the proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is access to the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call to your life the ministry of men. I call to your life the ministry of men. Enjoy the ministry of men. Enjoy divine connectors. Enjoy men of influence. Enjoy gifted men. Enjoy burden bearers in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, before you sit, let me pray for your passion. Some of you, your dreams have died because you are no longer serious about it. Everything you said you would do this year, the zeal. Some of you, even for ministry, you may be men and women of God, but sincerely, that zeal again, the zeal to fast gone zeal for God gone zeal for your goals gone the resilience to push towards your destiny is gone right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead I'm speaking as a prophetic word for someone let your zeal be restored let your zeal be restored your zeal for the house of God your zeal for the things of God your zeal for the pursuit of your destiny be restored in the name of Jesus please open your mouth in one minute and receive I declare that I receive in the name of Jesus for those in front I decree and declare the hand of God rests upon you that which you have been delivered from will never return to you again. You walk in the liberty that is in Christ. Go and return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. You see, if you're a man of God here, please listen. It is very good to be excellent and organized, but it's also very important to be discerning. Because one moment, God, when God is sending people to come here, he's attentive to the need of everyone. Even though they may seem like there are thousands of people and tens of thousands others following by way of internet, let me tell you when God deals with men, he deals with men corporately, but he deals with men individually. Are we together now? For the sake of one person, God can wake a man of God and say, make sure you suspend five minutes of your sermon until you address that person's pain. This is the God that we serve. So um, whether you are in this auditorium or all of the overflows to the basement or outside or following by way of internet, please do not allow the devil deceive you that you are so far, you are beyond sight. That means you don't know who God is. 
The Bible says Jesus left one side of the sea. The disciples almost lost their life and went to Gadara to meet only one man. Deliver that man, set him free and return back. That's how far he can go for the sake of one person. Hallelujah. So when God brings words like this, among the many things that these words reveal is the depth of his love. He lets you see and he lets you know that for your sake, that when he's sending you to church, you may be seated inside or seated outside and you may be wondering, I don't think I count among the tens of the thousands of people around, but that's not the way God works. He can send a word and make it look like you are the only one in that church and address your issue and address your issue. There are times you can be thinking and say, God, in my simple faith, if you are the one, talk to me about this. And the man of God can stop his sermon and address that issue because God wants to go that far to give you confidence that he is dependable.